Today I have a fully crafted Lubre's Ruin review for you, it's just in time. I haven't seen too many fully crafted Lubre's, it appears to be low on the list for players. This is the Raid Glaive, the only other legendary is the Enigma currently, and there's a possibility of getting an Arc or Stasis Glaive next season. When we first got our hands on the Glaives, I thought that they weren't too good, and I'm pretty sure a lot of you felt that way too. But after spending time with them, putting in the work, I think that they're great. And you're gonna see some of that in the gameplay. I'm pretty excited about this video because half the battle is knowing what to do. So that's gonna be a part of the review, learning to play with it. It's different than anything we've ever had. And I wanna point out the two most important things on the glaive, at least what I think. And we've had that with weapons. Fusions need accuracy and stability. Most nade launchers need ambitious assassin, auto loading. Most bows are gonna be best with quick access sling. Most hand cannons with Icarus, you guys get it. Glaives are like that too. So I'm gonna go over that, the strengths, the weaknesses, the bugs of the glaive. I hope you stick around for this one. There's a lot to talk about. This thing's actually pretty sweet. I got some great scenarios to show in PVE and PVP. I even clutched a GM, much to Fallout's pure hatred for me running a glaive, but I can confidently say the glaive saved the run. Yeah, it took a little bit longer because I was using a glaive, but I was doing glaive things. Again, Lubre is from the raid. You need five red borders for the craft. It's solar. It's a random drop from the final boss roll. And when it comes to the glaive, I feel that there are two things that are the most important. And with the upcoming changes this week, they say that they're pushing glaives deeper into the roles of hard-hitting melee damage, near-complete protection with shielded, as well as increasing projectile speed to make them more reliable at range. That's currently a little bit of the buggy part. With these glaives, sometimes you'll shoot the projectile. You don't hit them, but you get shield energy. Sometimes you actually hit them, you get the little hit marker, and it does no damage. Or it will do damage and not give shield energy. Pretty buggy. But with the changes... They've increased melee damage versus PvE combatants by 25%, excluded bosses and vehicles, reduced energy drain speed while shielded by 30%, and they increased the projectile speed dependent on the range stat. Increased from 30 to 60 at 100, increased 80 to 100. So the two things that really stand out on the glaive that are direct impacts to their performance, they go hand in hand, the range and shield duration. And you're gonna find that when you craft them. And I personally believe that the shield duration is the most important factor. And with the increased projectile speed this week, glaives like Lubre are gonna be better. Because again, they currently have some accuracy issues, some weird buggy things. The go-to has been Enigma because of Impulse Amplifier, but again, you felt it. Sometimes they hit, but they don't. Sometimes they don't hit, but they do. Or you don't get shield energy. Or you do when you shouldn't. It's just wild. But remember with Glaives, you get a projectile hit, it gives shield energy. You hold the Aim Down Sights button to put that shield up for damage resistance. In PvE, you get 97.5% damage resistance, and in the Crucible, you get 75%. Big damage resistance. The melee form of a glaive is good. It trashes rank and file enemies. It can kind of stun some yellow bars, ultras a little bit. You're just kind of a maniac with it. It's a three hit melee for PVP, or you could do a projectile then a melee for a cleanup. But again, for both PVE and PVP, the shield raised, the DR active while shooting projectiles, getting glaive hits, getting that shield back up, that's where the money's at. You're gonna need it. So to be currently, and what I suggest for pretty much all craftable glaives that we're gonna get, auxiliary reserves, accurized rounds. And I personally go with the shield duration masterwork. It's getting those things high. Now, again, this week, this season, we do have reduced energy drain speed while shielded by 30%. If that's substantial, just go all range. But it's not gonna hurt to have high shield duration regardless if that goes well or not. So this has 61 range, 68 shield duration. And you've been seeing some of the plays with Lubre. When it comes to the perks, there are some just good glaive options, but with how I see it, you can fine tune it to really bring them out. In that left column, we have turnabout, tilting windmills. And with that one, while blocking damage with your shield, it increases your your movement speed while shielding. It sounds a lot better than it is. Killing Wind, it's good. Steady Hand's good. Grave Robber is good. And Grave's actually a really good pick because melee kills come easy and in turn you bypass the Glaive Reload. It's strong for an aggressive playstyle. Slide a hand and then special to Lubre, a movable object. Lubre is the only Glaive in the game that has a movable object. This perk right here is what makes Lubre Lubre. Dealing range damage grants increased weapon energy while you're stationary with your shield raised. You have to be standing still, but that's fine. That's okay. It's actually great. Because again, 97.5 damage resistance in PvE, 75% in PvP. The DR is a massive part of the Glaive loop. This perk, well, let's look at it with a regular shield charge. Full magazine, 
five shots don't get the full shield. Because remember, as you're shooting, it's getting energy, but you're also blocking, so it's draining. You would need six projectile hits to get the full shield, and then it's still depleting. And again, as I go on with the review, I want to keep bringing up that buff and the importance of that shield. Having that shield up is huge, huge for glaives. And this right here is just a base glaive. This is how the Enigma handles, getting its energy hits for its shield. With a movable object, it's okay that you're standing still because you have massive DR. But as you're standing still while you're getting hits, just three hits gets you to where five did for base. Four hits is max shield, and then you can work from there. But it's not just this particular engagement that you're in. You want shield energy for your next enemy. That goes for the Crucible and PvE. Getting the movable object shield, the more energy, is a big deal. And I do have enhanced, so here's the difference. It just like all enhanced perks, it gives just a little bit more. You can see it right after the third shot. But enhanced does help. I have it. But this perk, let's come back to the reduced energy drain while shielded by 30%. This is going to go hand in hand, and it's going to be really good. And if you go back and watch some of the gameplay, I am doing this. And what's nice about PvP, PvE2, is that next enemy. You start off with a shield, and you make situations just pretty much impossible for them. I'll just get right in their face, hold the shield, have the 75% DR, then projectile melee or double projectile. I love this perk for Lubre, and it's what sets it apart. And on the right side, we have Unrelenting, Wellspring, Surrounded, Unstoppable Force, Bait and Switch, Vorpal, Swashbuckler, and here's the deal. We do have some good passive perks going on. Wellspring, Unrelenting is good on a Glaive, and we have damage perks. And for this Glaive, I think that there's a clear winner. It's Unstoppable Force. There's a couple other ones that do have pairings that are going to be good, but pound for pound, Unstoppable Force. Blocking damage gets you 30% more projectile damage for 4 seconds and hits reset the timer. 30%. With my glaive, and I'll give a little summary at the end, a movable object and unstoppable force. That's what I have fully crafted. This is the glaive playstyle. You don't have to do anything different. You're blocking and shooting. When someone hits you, you deal 30% more. It's going to happen. And with damage buffs, it will one-shot. Even when things go down to 15%, instead of 20, let's say in a rift, it's still going to one-shot. It's going to do 196 in PvP. But with this setup, you don't have to do anything special. You just block and land hits as you normally would. And when you get hits, you get more shield energy. And you're going to be shot out, so you're dealing more damage. Now with the other damage perks like Bait and Switch, great perk. Lubri is the only raid weapon that I don't recommend it for. Because with Bait and Switch, you have to land shots with your other two weapons, come back to Lubre, hit a projectile, it deals 35% more. Is 5% more damage worth that cycle? I don't think so. 30 or 35. And for 30, all you do is the same thing that you always do. Just hold up the shield, you take damage, you do 30% more. With Swashbuckler, it has a place. It's obviously great with Grave Robber. But again, the shield is just as important. So if you want aggressive play, Grave and Swash for PvE. But it's not going to do good and harder content, like a GM. A movable object, unstoppable force will. And then we have Surrounded, a dark horse. Enhanced Surrounded with the spec is probably the best enhanced perk of the game. 47% more damage if you have enhanced with the spec. You need three or more enemies to be within eight meters of you, but that's okay. The damage is going to be there. You pair that with a movable object. That way you're tanking, getting more, and dealing. You could also go with Threat Detector with Surrounded. There's a lot of options, good perks, but my top combinations, Unstoppable Force, a movable object, Grave Robber, Swashbuckler, Unstoppable Force or Threat with Surrounded, and again, it must be enhanced. If you want to make something with Unrelenting and or Killing Wind, those can work. But to really bring out Lubre, it's one of those. And in PvE, it can do well, but you have to stick with the playstyle. Now this past season, the gameplay that you're seeing, we have Unstoppable Glaive. There was a point in the GM where my team died, and then we have a GM Unstoppable Ogre Beam. That's a Melt Machine, took out my team. So I had a 1v1 with the Unstoppable, and I saved the run. I got hits, I got shield. The Ogre walked me down. With my shield up, I tanked the Ogre Beam. As it got on top of me, I ran out of ammo. I tanked the stomp, and after that, I had the melee stun. I got back to my teammate, got everyone up, we completed the GM. But throughout the GM, I was responsible for the unstoppable champions. Otherwise, it's just all close quarters and tanking damage. It's safe, it really is. It's not very fast, but it's safe. The perk combo of force and object is a dream for things like this. You deal damage back as you're getting hits, you're getting more energy. You can have the shield up for revives, you can shield up when moving cover to cover. I liked it, it was great. And for the Crucible, it's just as fun. You've seen a lot of it with damage buffs, unstoppable force, it one-shots. 
I'm a big fan of Top Tree Dawn with Icarus Dash. I used Wings of Sacred Dawn at times, and I made a video on that not too long ago. I also used the Boots of Assembler with Lumina. So I would get damage buffs, apply them to teammates, I would then put my shield up, and it's going to one-shot as I'm tanking damage. It can 1v3 no problem. It's crazy. I did Antaeus Ward's Titan, so deflect. Get projectile hits back, then one shot with the 170. I've done Bacchus. Bacchus is nutty too. Like, these dudes were mad. So when it comes to the Crucible, movement is key with it. Icarus Dash, Bacchus, Knee Slide with Antaeus. It gives you the tool necessary to box someone in. And this Glaive and the other ones are about to be a lot better. And I plan to cover them with Worm God Winters and more next season. You gotta be patient with them. You have to learn them. Like I said, at first I hated them. But once I figured them out, what you have to do, the loop, they are wild. They have big play potential. And when it comes to Lubre, special with its perks. And I tested them all. The pure Glaive playstyle of not having to do anything of unstoppable force and movable object is the difference maker. It kind of slaps. If you're new here, remember to hit the subscribe button. And if you are subscribed, thank you so much for your support. Let's talk about Glaives down below and what do you think of Lubre's Ruin? Thank you for watching. And until the next one, I am Cool Guy.